So this marks the ending of this tutorial series. You can find all of those tutorials on the channel. But this one's gonna be basically a recap of what we've done on this project and explaining the workflow and the method I used to make this cyberpunk character step by step. Then I'm gonna link you to all those tutorials on the way. I get three different renders. Tell me which one you think is best. Obviously I cannot upload the real time version on YouTube because it's like 20, 21 hours or something. But you can find it on my Gumroad and Patreon page if you're interested. All of the real time videos are there. Link in the description. Let's go. I start with a sphere, shape it like a head, extrude it the neck, remesh it to add more polygons to those parts. Then using clay strip brush I start sculpting the basic forms of the chest and shoulders, pronounce the chin a bit, masking the ears area, ctrl I to invert and drag it out. Then I start sculpting the form. In the modifier properties add in multi res modifier and subdivide to get more polygons. Then I sculpt in the mouth area and cheeks, pushing the eye socket and push out the nose. Then I start working on the nose form and carving the nostrils. I have to mention I have a skeleton head by my side. Well, not by my side. I meant as the reference, obviously. I'm constantly looking at it. Also, there's a pretty good ZBrush tutorials about it that helped me so much. But I haven't found a good one for Blender, so maybe someday I make my own. Start sculpting the mouth. I have a tutorial about this on the channel. I put the link on the top right corner. Work more on the neck and shoulders muscles, then cleaning out the chin area. Also sculpting the nose details, inflating the lips a bit using inflation brush to make it more puffy. Using crease brush I start drawing the eyes then carved it in. I make a simple eye for now and put it in the eye socket so it wouldn't feel so awkward but it made it even more awkward. So moving on to the eyelids and areas around the eye especially the crunkle part which is really important then adding some clay to the cheeks and smoothing it out. Working more on the nose details and it is done. Now we have to retopologize it. I have a really nice tutorial about this one. You can find it on the top right corner. It is simply the best. Totally unbiased opinion, I guess. In the modifier properties, add a shrink wrap. Select your old model as the target and put the wrap method on project. Don't forget to enable negative. Add a multi res modifier, subdivide and subdivide until we got close to our old model. Mess around with the limit on the shrink wrap if the projection is weird. Now we can apply the shrink wrap. It's time to make the clothing. I add a plane. Enable the snap tool so the vertices snap to our model. Then using poly build tool, I extruded the faces and go around the mesh till we have covered up the torso. I added multi res modifier and subdivide. Then in the sculpting mode, I start sculpting the biggest folds on the cloth. Using crease brush, I added the stitch lines. Then using clay strip brush, I added the small folds and wrinkles. Again, I have a fully explained tutorial about this. Link in the top right corner. For the thing around the neck, which I heard is the anti-hack thing, I start with a cube, extrude continuously, and go around the neck. I added a mirror modifier so we don't have to do that for the left part. Pressing Ctrl R, I add a few loop cuts so we have more polygons throughout the whole mesh, cause we're gonna sculpt it. I added the multi res modifier and in the sculpt mode I start adding folds and wrinkles. Like the clothing, the folds are not intense cause it's gonna be leather. With some simple modeling, I made the thing they got on their arms, then duplicated few times and place them on the arm. Added mirror modifier so we have it on the other side as well. For the strips, I selected the faces around the thing, duplicate and separate it. Added a solidify modifier to give it a bit of thickness and duplicate it few times. For the strips on the jacket, just like the topology method, extract until we got the shape like this then duplicate it two times i do the exact same thing for the other strips as well Add a bunch of cylinders to make these small things on the front. Now for the eyebrows. I select the head. Go to edit mode and select the faces in the eyebrow area. Duplicate it and separate it from the mesh. Then in the object data properties, I added a vertex group. And in the weight paint mode, start drawing the parts where I wanted to have hair. Add the hair particles and groom them based on the eyebrow reference I got. I like this method because I can change the shape of the eyebrow whenever I want. Then I duplicate and mirror it to the other side. Did the exact same thing for the eyelash but this time separated the upper and lower eyelashes by giving them two different vertex groups. Then added hair particles to each of them and groomed them based on the reference. For the zipper, with simple modeling tools, I make one of the components. Add an array modifier, I repeat the model till we have a fairly long zipper. I attach it to a curve so we can align it with the jacket, then duplicate and mirror it to the other side. Then try to fit it exactly into each other. I model the simple zipper slider and place it on the top. I explain it fully 
fully on the clothing tutorial I mentioned. Now for the hair. For this hairstyle, I divide the hair to two parts. I added one vertex group for the side and one for the top. Added the hair particles and start grooming the hair to the back. Some roughness to make it more believable and braid kink for more realism. I explained the hair system in my ultimate guide to create hair in blender video. You can find it on the top right corner as always. For the side, I added a really short hair. For the hair shader color, I used the mix of diffuse BSDF and glossy note with a mixed shader. I wanted more contrast in the hair while using EV renderer, so I added a mix RGB and connected to the diffuse. Added the hair info note and connected the random to the mix RGB factor. Now I can change the main color and choose a darker color for the second one. Also I wanted the hair to have different colors based on the length, so I added another mix RGB, then a color ramp to control the gradient. Now by connecting the intercept to color ramp and color ramp to mix RGB and mix RGB to color 1. One, we can have a gradient color on the hair. I explain it further in the hair shader video, link on top. For the clothing textures, I unwrapped the UVs of the jacket and exported it to Substance. There I added a ready leather material, changed the leather color to a navy blue color, then in the new layer, added some dirt texture. And at the end, used the grunge texture and gave it a dark red color. Increased the contrast to make it look like blood, then made it more shiny. I picked up the stitch line brush from the assets and start drawing close to the stitches we sculpted back in blend. I explained the full texturing process in that video on top, you can check it out. I've done the same thing to the other models in our project, it's basically the same procedure, but I added some grunge to the edges to make it more aged and rusted. For the eyes, I start with a sphere, in the edit mode I selected the front faces and push them forward to make the cornea. Selected the faces in front, duplicate and separate it and push them back this time for the iris. I brought this iris image and used it as a texture for the iris. Then I start painting the eye a dark red color. A smooth dark dark red to white transition from back to front. I made some handmade vein PNGs which I used them to paint these veins on the sclera. I explain it fully on the realistic eye tutorial, link is up there. I also upload all of the PNGs for you to use it, you can find it on the description of that video. Now the front of the cornea should be transparent, so we can see the iris through it. I added a color ramp and gradient node. Then with the texture coordinates, I rotate and control the gradient using the color ramp. The white part's gonna be transparent, so by connecting it to the transmission, we have the front transparent. For better results, I drag and drop the iris and the sclera textures to this website and generate all these maps and brought all of the maps back in Blender and connect them to the principal BSDF. Then I select both of the objects and in the edit mode, I move them to the eye socket. Then added a mirror modifier for the other side. You see it looks fake AF, that's cause there's no chronicle. To make the lacrimo chronicle, I made a plane, and in the edit mode, while the snapping is on, I start extruding the edges till I have a shape like this. Then in the sculpting tab, I start sculpting the details for the chronicle, unwrapped it, and painted a reddish color for the base color, and added the red subsurface color. As you can see, the transition is not smooth, so I added a color ramp and gradient node and connected to the alpha. Now by tweaking the rotation and color ramp, I made a smooth transition to the eye. All of the things I've done with the eye are explained step by step in that video. Video, so check it out. At the end, for the tear line, I selected the faces in the eye area, duplicate and separate them, push it out of the body a bit, increase the transmission and specular, added noise texture and displacement node, and connect it to the displacement to achieve that watery looking tears. Now for the head texturing. I unwrapped the UVs of the head, get a copy of our model for later, I brought the head diffuse map I got from texture XYZ. In the UV editing tab and in the edit mode, I start matching the UVs with the texture, just selecting the faces and while proportional editing is on, moving the faces to the correct area so it would be matched with the image. In my last video, I explained how to use these maps to get a realistic skin shader in Blender step by step. So I'm not gonna go deep on it in this one, go check that one out. Then using a small free app called XNormal, I baked all of the maps from the model with the stretch UVs to the one with the normal unwrapped UVs. A lot of people have been asking why not use Blender instead? Because this app is much faster in rendering really high resolution maps and it's just really easy to use, so why not? Then back in Blender, I choose the model I got a copy from in the beginning and bring all of those maps back in here and connect them to the principal BSDF. Our maps are not perfect yet because there are so many useless elements on the skin that we need to remove. So I use the same face image to paint out those areas. Again, I explain all of it in the tutorial up there. For the glasses, using simple modeling techniques, I start with a plane, extrude and went around the face and made these simple glasses. I gave the frame a solid 
solid dark gray color and a mix of transparent and glossy VSDF for the front. And since it's futuristic, I want it to act like a screen. So I unwrap the UVs properly and export the image. Opening the image in Photoshop, I added some elements like a health bar or a warning sign to it, then saved it as a PNG without any background. You can do it in any software or even Blender, but it's definitely easier and faster in Photoshop. Back in Blender, I import the PNG, then added another mix shader and emission, then connect the PNG to emission and emission to mix shader, so it acts like a light. Optionally, I added some makeup and blood to the face in Substance. You can paint this in Texture Paint tab, but since I have a really high resolution texture and not a powerful PC at all, it was really laggy and annoying in Blender, so I used Substance since it's much lighter for this stuff. And the final touches for the face, as y'all know, they mostly have cyberwares on their faces. So I enable a snap, drew it in a plane until I have a futuristic shape. I have some reference by my side from the Cyberpunk 2077. I select the head. In the sculpting mode, I paint the mask close to the cyberwares. Then by pressing Ctrl I, inward it. And using grab brush, I push it inside. Then Ctrl I again and using inflate brush, I inflate the edges just a bit. For the cyberware, I downloaded their texture and bring it here. While the base color is dark grayish color, I connect the dirt to the metallic and change the position and rotation using mapping, then connect it to the roughness as well. I added a bright contrast node and drop it between these two. To control the intensity of the roughness, I do the exact same thing to the frame of the glasses. Now it's time to pose the character. Yay! I make sure to apply any mirror modifier I got so it wouldn't interfere with our posing. I select all of the objects except the clothing. Press tab to go to edit mode, then select everything above the neck. Turn on the proportional editing so we have a smooth rotation, then I rotate the head just a bit to the left. For the lighting, I added the area light to the front with an angle, tone it down so it wouldn't be so intense, I duplicate it and move it to the left and rotate it and point it to the character, then change the color to something like purple and add a copy for the right side, but this time with a green color. As you all probably know, cyberpunk cities have a lot of colors and LEDs, so it just makes sense to have a colorful lighting. I tilt the head slightly to the left to make it more interesting. Forgot to mention for the strips around the neck, I have a simple principal shader, layer weight and a color ramp node for the light. Connect the facing to the color ramp and color ramp to emission. Now any color you put in the color ramp will be the strip lights. I realize the eyes are a bit too bright, so I select this clear texture and I start painting a gray pale bluish color around the iris to make it more real. Now for the final step, I select the head and the object data properties at a new vertex group named face. In the edit mode, I select the face except for some parts, like the mouth, then assign it to the vertex group. Now I add a hair particles with really short length, put the children settings on interpolated. In the vertex group, I put the face and the density, so only the selected areas have hair. Then I start grooming the hair based on the direction of the face. For the material, I give it a skin color for the base, and a bit of transmission so it wouldn't be so visible. And there we have it, we've gone through all the things we did for this character. Again, you can check out all of the tutorials I link up there and also my Patreon and Gumroad for the real-time videos of this character. And yeah, if you find this video helpful, like and sub would really help the channel grow. If you have any question or suggestion, don't be shy, leave a comment and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.